Today we're delving into Unit 3.5 of the first half of General Chemistry, which covers formulas and equations. If you find value in this video, please like it and let people know about the channel because it really does help spread the knowledge. As discussed in Unit 2, the molecular formula of a substance provides information about the proportionate quantity of atoms for each element present in the substance. For example, in H2O, there are two hydrogen atoms to one oxygen, oxygen atom, and as stated in the previous video, there are two moles of hydrogen to one mole of oxygen in one mole of water. In the case of water, H2O is the molecular formula as well as the empirical formula. Empirical formulas represent the simplest ratio of elements present in a compound and are commonly used for compounds with complex structures or when the exact arrangement of atoms is unknown. It does not provide the actual number of atoms, but rather shows the relative proportions. For example, the empirical formula of glucose is CH2O, indicating for that every for every carbon atom C, there are two hydrogen atom H's and one oxygen atom O in the background in the compound. On the other hand, a molecular formula gives the actual number of atoms of each element in a molecule. It provides a more precise representation of the compound's composition. Using the example of glucose, its molecular formula is C6H12O6, indicating that a glucose molecule consists of six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. This is the reason we focus on molecular formulas, as they provide more precise and useful information. One of the most fundamental equations you'll need to solve for as a chemist is how to calculate the amount of reactants or products that are needed or produced in a given chemical reaction. Let's say you're a medicinal chemist that just got an order from your boss for five kilograms of lidocaine, a local anesthetic commonly used at dentists. You're a perfect chemist and you have made it before, so you know what are the synthesis, which is C4H11N plus CH2O plus C9H9N going to C14H22N2O, but you need to know how many grams of the starting materials you need to buy. So where do you start? You start with what you know, which is that you need to make five kilograms of lidocaine and you convert that to moles. In these types of equations, it is often best to place, best place to start by converting everything to moles. To do this, you multiply the atoms in the molecular formula by their atomic mass, like we learned previously. There are 14 carbons, which is 14 times 12.011 AMU plus 22 hydrogens, which is 22 times 1.008 AMU plus two nitrogens, which is 14.007 times two plus one oxygen, which is 15.999 AMUs, coming out to 234.343 grams per mole, which is the molecular weight of lidocaine. Once you know the molecular weight, you can calculate how many moles you'll need. Remember, the molecular weight is in grams, so you have to convert kilograms to it, which is 1,000 grams per one kilogram, then divide by the molecular weight to get 21.336 moles of lidocaine. Looking at the synthesis again, you see that it is a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one reactants going to one product. Since there are no co coefficients in the formula, C4H11N plus CH2O plus C9H9N going to C14H22N2O, this means that you'll need 21.336 moles of each starting material. Then you convert these moles to grams using the molecular weights. By now you know how to collect, calculate molecular weight, so I won't show you that again. I'll get, just give it for each starting material. 73.14 grams per mole in C4H11N, 30.03 grams per mole in a CH2O, and 131.18 grams per mole in C9H9N. Once you have the molecular weights, determining the grams is just multiplying the moles by the molecular weights as such. To get 1560.5 grams of C4H11N, 640.7 grams of CH2O 
and 2,798.9 grams of C9H9N. It is important to keep in mind that this is assuming you are a perfect chemist and 100% of the molecules react to form the product. This is seldom the case, so in the next unit, we'll go over some of the imperfections in chemical synthesis. Based on what you learned, think about the following question. Provide the balanced equation of the combustion of hydrogen and oxygen to form water and calculate the grams of hydrogen and oxygen needed to produce one gallon of water. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time learning and bettering yourself. If you like the video and want to learn more, donate, or get tutoring, please check out my website, nocollegeneeded.org. You can use the code NCN for 20% off tutoring and any supplemental materials. If the subject isn't up yet, please be patient. I'm working on bringing them up as soon as I can.